Okay, welcome back to the Closure Cones walkthrough. We're on number 11, sequence comprehensions. So what are sequence comprehensions? I think we're going to learn what those are here, but basically with Closure, you can use the for macro as a nice way to create new ex sequences out of existing sequences. And we're going to see some examples of that here. So let's take a look at the first one. Sequence comprehensions can bind each element in turn to a symbol. So let's look at what's going on here. We're using the for macro and we're passing it this vector where we're, we're telling it the name of a, a variable, index, and what values. So here this is a, a sequence of six elements and it's basically saying for each of those elements, and we'll call each one in turn index, we're going to do something with each index. And in this case, we're simply returning, returning that value by itself, no, no change to it. So what this is going to return is uh, basically exactly what we fed it, this range 6. So I could simply say range 6 actually, and that should pass. So that, again, that is just going to return a sequence of numbers from zero to five. But instead of typing all that out, I'll just create another <laughs> range of six. And that's the same thing. So this, this sequence comprehension didn't really do very much. It didn't do anything at all. It just returned the original sequence unchanged. But let's look at some other example here. Okay, they can easily emulate mapping. So we've got three expressions here. This is, I guess, the result. Here's a map expression, and here's a for expression. So these are all supposed to be equivalent. Now let's look at what the map is doing. Uh, it's applying this function to the range six. Uh, the function is simply taking of value and squaring it. It's multiplying the value by itself. So it's just a simple square function being applied to these uh, six elements in this range six sequence. So let's see how we would do that with a four comprehension. Um, so for, for the index in range six, what are we going to return for each one of those? we want to square each one, right? So we would be returning the, the multiplying index by index. And there you go, that one passed. That's equivalent. And you notice it's a little bit shorter. It just happens to be a little bit shorter the way that, that we uh, write it. Um, so there's a small benefit here for that in that case. Now let's look at the next one and also filtering. So one thing you can do is you can have a filter expression, and that's something that the four comprehensions can express as well. So here we're saying for, for index in blank, um, but then here's a filtering statement. When, and the expression is when the index is odd, only then proceed, and it'll return each index here. So I think it wants us to iterate over the same range that's being used here. So we'll paste that in there. And there we go, that one's matching. So for each index in range 10, when the index is odd, simply return that index and create a sequence out of, out of that. So that's the same thing as using this filter expression. Okay, so we saw this for expression is a bit longer than the equivalent using a filter, but that's not always the case. Let's look at the next one. And they trivially allow combinations of the two transformations. So here we're doing a map with, oh, it looks like another square function. We're mapping the square function to the filtering of the odd values from the range 10. So apparently we can express the same thing here with this for macro. So let's try to do that. Um, we're already iterating over range 10 for, for each index in the range 10 when 
when odd, right? When index is odd, what do we return? Well, this is where we would return whatever the mapping was doing. What's the transformation? Um, and that's simply, again, going to be index times index. There you go. Okay, so we were able to do mapping and filtering. Let's see, more complex transformations can be formed with multiple binding forms. Okay, this is kind of big here, but it's just basically saying that this for expression is generating this vector that we see here. This is a vector of vectors, it looks like, uh, keyword pairs. So let's look at this for expression. For row in this vector, this just has three items in it, three keywords, top, middle, and bottom. And then it's also iterating over another vector for each column in yeah, left, middle, and right. So what are we producing as we iterate over each row and each column? It looks like what we're producing is a vector of vectors. Each vector has two elements in it. So it's kind of like a cross product going on here. So for each one of these, we need to create a vector and it's simply going to be, it looks like a row and the column. Hey, and there you go. So pretty easy to express this with a for comprehension and it's pretty simple to read and make sense of too. So this, this is a good demonstration of some of the expressive power of the for macro enclosure. Cool, so with that, I'll see you in the next video.